Most people can't wait to leave their hometown behind, but then again, most people aren't MMA fighter Nate Diaz. If there's one way to summarize the lasting effect his hometown of Stockton, California had on him, it would be the life lesson it taught him. Namely, always be prepared to commit to a fight. Nate's older brother Nick refers to growing up in Stockton as a curse, but Nate is grateful that it helped him develop his kill or be killed attitude, and he represents the city of his birth with more pride than most. Not only did he popularize a humiliating maneuver to inflict upon his opponents known as the Stockton Slap, he's also ensured that the city's area code 209 is now as infamous as he himself is. UFC commentator John Anik even has had those very numbers tattooed on his arm after losing a poorly made bet against Diaz in one of his fights. Historically speaking, the city of Stockton has dealt with a very high crime rate. More than just that, it's also one of the largest US cities to ever declare bankruptcy. With all of that going on as backdrop, Diaz grew up in a small one-story house in Lodi, which is just a little bit north of Stockton. He lived there with his mother, older brother, and sister, but his father wasn't around much during his childhood. When asked, Nate hates to refer to where he grew up as a rough place because he feels it's too cliche that a cage fighter would come from a violent spot. But he can't deny the effect that Stockton's brutality had on his life. He once told ESPN, It's not necessarily we were sitting in the middle of violence, we were just very aware of everything. If someone was getting into it, there was a fight, you would see fights all the time. When Nate was around 13, his older brother began learning how to defend himself, spending most of his time training out of the city's animal house gym, while Nate worked as a cook at the restaurant next door. Eventually, Nate joined his brother in training. More than just that, he became an integral part of it. In fact, whenever Nick would have friends come over to their house to challenge him to a fight, he would tell them to try and tap Nate out first. Most of the time, these older dudes couldn't even come close to choking the then 15-year-old Nate out. Oh, shit. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, shit. This is awesome. oh, shit. Nate eventually followed in his brother's footsteps, and by the time he'd successfully won the Ultimate Fighter 5 competition, he thought that he finally had it made and would be able to buy luxury homes and super fast cars. But it didn't quite work out that way. The prize for winning the competition was a six figure contract. The problem was, Nate didn't realize he wasn't being paid that money in a big lump sum. Instead, it was to be spread out across multiple fights. Not really. Realizing this, Nate walked into the wrong automobile dealership looking for a top of the line car and wound up walking out with the only thing he could actually afford a small Honda Civic. Following that purchase, he only had a couple thousand dollars to his name, which meant he wasn't going to be able to buy a house for his mom like he planned at first. I went home and I went to buy a, a, a I had a plan to buy my mom a house and buy a Cadillac. But once Nate Diaz became the first person in the UFC to defeat Conor McGregor in 2016, his prospects picked up. He not only began making a ton of money, he's since made sure to take care of his family too. Believe it or not, but Nate Diaz has never moved away from Stockton, California. In fact, he still lives there to this day. It might not be recognized as the safest place to live, but Diaz wouldn't want to call anywhere else home. Property records suggest that Nate bought his estate back in 2011, paying at the time the reasonable amount of $430,000. Originally built in 1995, the exterior of this three bedroom, two and a half bath residence gives us a very 90s vibe. As for the inside and it's over 3,200 square feet of space, well, that's a little bit harder to see because Nate has been careful to not reveal much. More or less, that just leaves us with what we can see from the outside. And it's pretty evident that the community Nate lives in is both charming and peaceful, which is probably why he never felt the need to leave. Out back, the home is distinguished by its ample 1.49 acres of land as well as a lavish pool and an extra large patio that's perfect for entertaining alongside some al fresco dining. And don't even worry about privacy because thanks to the wrought iron fence that surrounds the property as well as some strategically planted trees, no one will be peering in from the outside, especially not around the backyard. While not much has been revealed about the interior of Nate's home, what I was able to uncover was something almost as interesting. Details on the part of his estate that he uses more than any other, his trap house. <laughs> 
Sitting directly across from Nate Diaz's main property is a small two bedroom guest house where Nate and his teammates regularly gather to chat, smoke up, and watch fights from YouTube on the big screen. Nate patterned this piece of property after his childhood in Lodi, complete with a heavy bag hanging from a tree in the front, just like the one he and Nick used to punch when they were kids. Nate's childhood home is less than a five minute drive from where he lives today. More than just that, his mother and sister live only a block away from their former family home and his father lives close by too. At this point in his career, Nate has made millions of dollars and he's used a lot of it to secure homes for his family members as well as himself without staying too far away from his roots. There's even a nice apartment building known as the University Lofts in downtown Stockton where Nate will regularly put up his teammates and coaches when they arrive from out of town. If they're not already staying at the trap house, that is. For instance, Luciano Ramos, a bantamweight fighter from Argentina, showed up at Nate's gym three years ago. A few months later, Nate's team was partying when someone tried to pick a fight with Diaz. So Ramos stepped in and knocked the guy out with one punch. After that, Diaz let Ramos stay at the trap house free of charge and he's lived there ever since. The living room of this trap house is more or less a glorified man cave, complete with a desktop computer, playing clips of Mike Tyson highlights, framed pieces of art, as well as colorful illustrations that show Albert Einstein, Jeff Bezos, as well as logos of companies like Netflix, NASA, Facebook, and Instagram. There's also a ton of virtual 20 friendly stuff including a bonk, backwoods, rolling papers, and lighters. Completing this eclectic collection is a custom pillow featuring a bloody Diaz choking out one of his UFC opponents. Diaz chose his Einstein poster because this image of one of the world's smartest men is symbolic of how he used martial arts to lift himself up out of poverty and become an elite athlete. He believes that like Einstein, he saw something others didn't, namely, his own market value. There's no denying that Nate Diaz has been able to completely transform his life. And it's even crazier to think he's done so without having left his hometown. So whether Nate emerges victorious from his upcoming fight with Jake Paul or not, don't expect him to start looking for a new place to live anytime soon. That's because Nate Diaz has known where he's belonged from the moment he was born. All right, everyone, that's gonna bring this house tour to a close. Thank you so much for watching and before before you head out, consider answering the following question. What's the one thing about your hometown that would have made you want to stay? Let me know what made the place you grew up special to you in the comments below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss an episode. My name is Kara, follow me on Instagram to chat, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye.